Welcome to Agave Clock. My name is Julio Shoshocotla. We are at Hecho and Dumbo with uh, Chef Danny Mena, co-founder of El Pelotón de la Muerte Mezcal and Mezcal is a Leyenda. Chef, thanks for having us here. How are you? Julio, thank you for having me. We're doing great today. Um, Danny, so why Mezcal? Well, cheers first. Cheers. <laughs> mm. San Luis. San Luis. Why not mezcal? Um, you know, mezcal is something that's, that's it's fascinating because it is such an integral part of Mexican culture, and yet, and it's been around for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, but at the same time, it's something that we really didn't consume when, we're, when I was growing up, and it was something that was only consumed in these small little towns. And little by little, it's kind of, you've seen this resurgence, and it's something that you have this kind of national, national patrimony, and it's something that you can be really proud of, of being a part of something that's so special and really magical. Um, yeah. that to me, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing, you know, it's amazing to be associated to this and be part of it. Yeah. Um, mezcal is a leyenda. Uh, you guys have five expressions. You started with three. Uh, Guerrero, Durango, Oaxaca. Correct. But uh, recently you added uh, Puebla and San Luis Potosí. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, Mezcal de Leyenda? So Mezcal de Leyenda, we actually started um, way back in like 2006 by opening the first Mezcal bar in Mexico City called La Botica. Mm -hmm. And everybody know, knew them by yes. like Las Mezcalerías. Um, we were kind of the, it was actually the first Mezcal bar that was only had Mezcal and beer and that was it. Um, and what we had is, years before that, we've been working with all these little producers all throughout Mexico. Yeah. And so we started the line of Mezcal de Leyenda, and the idea of it was to kind of showcase the variety of mezcales throughout the country. You know, there's mezcal, obviously, 95% of all mezcal is made from Oaxaca. Oaxaca. Mm -hmm. um, so it really is an important aspect. But there's also a cultural differences between the, just the way they call palenques. Like in, in Guerrero, they call them fabricas. fabricas. In Durango, they call them binatas. You know, mm -hmm. there's, and just like that, there's so many little differences from each one that the idea of mezcal de was to showcase this kind of you know, expanse cultural identity. Um, at the same time, then we started growing the brand. So Puebla, um, we're all from Mexico City, which Puebla is a state that touches yes. kind of Mexico City. Uh -huh. um, and my partner, who's part of the CRM, was one that was actually had an important aspect of getting into, uh, getting Puebla into the CRM as a denomination of yeah. origin. Mm -hmm. And so obviously we wanted to have something that was that close to home, you know, something very unique and different. Um, so it was something that we were really proud of um, to be able to get a Puebla. And then San Luis Potosí, on the other end, is a one that ex exemplifies kind of the differences okay. where this one is not smoked, mm -hmm. it's not cooked in a pit underground, okay. yes. and that's by tradition of San Luis Potosí. So you have these much brighter green notes um, and you won't get kind of those deep undertones that you get in other mezcales. Um, but this is an artisanal, a traditional mezcal. And that's what makes each one so unique and so special. Yeah, Mezcal has grown so much in the last couple of years. But uh, it still is, is a challenge to be a mezcal owner. So what's the biggest challenge for you as a mezcal owner? I mean, I think really the biggest challenge is to kind of manage expectations. Mm -hmm. You know, you get into certain worlds and mezcal is the hottest thing. And everybody's pouring mezcal and mezcal is huge. The reality is that mezcal only represents 0.07% mm -hmm. of the entire market. I mean, less than 1%, okay. one-tenth of 1% of the entire market. So it's very, very small. And in Mexico, behind tequila, it has the second most amount of brands. Okay. So you're talking about a very small market and a huge amount of brands. brands. And everybody's kind of excited about mezcal, so everybody wants to get their brand. And so they go and they talk to a producer and they buy, you know, a few thousand liters and they're like, I'm making my mezcal. And my yes. mezcal is the world's greatest and blah, blah, blah. Mezcal is special. It is something truly amazing mm -hmm. that once you realize and you just focus on your brand and, you, and if you do it for love and you do it for passion, little by little there's a lot of room for growth on that other side. So you just kind of have to realize that, that it's small markets. You're not going to become a millionaire. You're not going to be everybody one day dreams of it. But really, the reality of it is you have to get into the game for love of mezcal, for the passion of it. And that's kind of something where, you know, we've been doing this for 10 years now, so we've kind years. of seen it. And I was, you know, I'm a chef, yes. I have a restaurant, that's where I make my money. Okay. This to me is something where it's for fun. More for like passion. Pure passion, pure passion. And the hope that one day maybe I can make a salary from it. Okay. But right now it's, it's love and passion. It's being able to, to showcase to the world something so special um, that is something that, you know, you can get behind. Like one of the things they were trying to do with the new norm, um, mm -hmm 
for mezcal is to kind of create the most premium white spirit in the world. Okay. And you know, they went to cognac, they went to champagne, they went to whiskey and kind of understand all the process. And it's one of the things that like Mexico is a country and you know, you the Secretary of Tourism, the Secretary of Agriculture, like all these departments in Mexico are really getting behind mezcal. Okay. Yeah. Because the process of mezcal is so artisanal. It's so like traditional. There's so much culture behind it that no other spirit can really compare to it. You know, you're talking, even you go with cognac, you go whiskeys, you do all these that are grapes that are one year. You do whiskeys and you do grains yeah. that are not in them. Something that takes anywhere between 7 and 20, 30, 40 yes. years to grow. It's a long time. You know, and then the domination of origin of mezcal is 5 times the size of tequila, 10 times the size of scotch. So you're also talking about a difference in terroir the land that you have a plant that takes 20 years to grow from northern Mexico and another one eight years to grow from southern Mexico the flavor profiles just from the plant itself are so completely diverse. different you know so it's something that there, there is this kind of um, range of flavors that you can't compare in any other spirit mm -hmm. you know not even in wine so it's something that has really as a base not only this really deep artisanal sort of aspect because the production methods are really rustic yeah. but also just because innately in what the denomination of origin states gives you something that's really special. So it's something that I think, you know, Mezcal has as an advantage over anybody else and why people are so enamored and it's so lucky. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's a small little growing category that you have to really, little really, little. really kind of get behind and just when, as you know, as Mexicans that own a Mexican, you know, a Mexican Mezcal and kind of, it, it, to us it's important to also help the producers and kind of use it as a social tool mm -hmm. to actually kind of help Mexico go ahead and all of a sudden be something where it doesn't kind of follow the lines of tequila where these big conglomerates come in and buy it but like let's help out these producers and let's make it something viable something where they can actually make some money and then maybe they can save money and they can build a bigger house and they can kind of you know advance in this world and so it's something that I think Mezcal has that opportunity to do yeah uh, also there are a lot of people passionate about Mezcal and um, but some people are still getting to Namaskal. So what would you say to those people that are getting to Namaskal? I think you really have to kind of, you know, reflect and kind of understand. Sometimes, you know, mezcals typically have a lot of smoke. Um, so people kind of assume when they taste smoke, they're like, it's strong. Yeah. But if you look at it, if you can, and I think once this kind of like craft whiskey revolution is happening, people are starting their palates are kind of accepting that a little more alcohol and it's not as strong mm -hmm. that, um, that if you get past that idea of what mezcal used to be, you know, where, where in the 80s it was all about that worm and the you worm. have, you know, and you sat there and like even tequila, like the fact that tequila, like was, you were like, the way you drank tequila was lime and salt and you wanted to wash it down as fast yes. as you could. Imagine any cognac <laughs> producer, any whiskey producer saying that's how you drink a good, yeah. no. no. So once you get past that and say, okay, I don't need to have the worm in the bottom for it to be a good mezcal. Like now it shows that if you have a worm in the bottom, it's probably not a good mm -hmm. mezcal, yeah. you know, because there's no reason to mask any of those flavors or try to do a gimmick. That once you kind of get past that and you open your mind and you realize what you're about to consume, that it is has all the flavors that has like when they were talking about like what makes a good wine, one of the important factors of wine does it represent the area that it comes from. Mm -hmm. And if you sit there and if you ever have the pleasure of going to Mexico and you can drink a mezcal at the palenque, at yes. the fabrica. From you, the still. Straight from the stills and you drink that, you will come back and everything will make sense. And you sit there and when you drink one of these, you're like, this is San Luis Potosí. Yeah. And this is what Salmiana tastes like in uh -huh. Oaxaca. Like, and it really becomes really special that mezcal has that way of kind of transporting you yes. from that region of where it's from. And it's such an important aspect of it that I think as soon as you can, you can kind of close your mind from what you used to think mezcal was and open it of what it really is, you know, it, it will set you free. Well, Danny, what, what else would you like to serve to our viewers? You know, um, one of the things that I think is, is, is fascinating that I love about mezcal and, and you have to is, is kind of, because it has all these kind of different, as they call it, organoleptic properties, we're starting to do a lot of pairing with it at, mm -hmm. at the restaurants, you know. And we're about to open a restaurant in Bushwick that's uh, going to be a loncheria and it's all going to be... Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. And it's, if all goes well. But it's going to be a, a charcoal grilled oven. Okay. So everything we're cooking in a, in a grill oven and that kind of smoke and that sort of, that sort of uh, depth and, and, and kind of earthiness that you yeah. get from it is going to pair so well with mezcal that I think it's something that as people are kind of get into and you know cocktails are a wonderful way to kind of get introduced to it and kind of start to get accustomed, let, let's say, to that flavor profile. Once you do that, you can start tasting um, mezcal and you can start to really notice that like, you know, how this to me is like jalapenos and has all this like brininess yeah. and all these wonderful like bright flavors. And you compare that and you mix that with like a ceviche 
yeah. and it's amazing and they both add to it and that's kind of the point of it that, that when you can have both that are kind of mixed together mm -hmm. then you create something more special wow. and Mescal has I'm that just opportunity. getting hungry now I know <laughs> well Beautiful. Danny thank you very much thanks for sharing some of your knowledge thanks for sharing your Mescal Mescal is a leyenda congratulations on your new project and good thank luck thank you very much salud salud thank you Julio. thank you thank you guys thank you for watching No pasa nada, eh, eh, eh.